Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you tonight just for the privilege and opportunity to come and to study the word once again. We thank you, Father God, for giving us insight and revelation, even as we continue to study on why renew the mind. And so we just praise you for it, and we just thank you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we have been talking about uh, why renew the mind. And, um, and uh, you know, Roman, Romans 12, too, I think is really a good summary of why we should renew our minds. And it says, don't become like the people of this world. Instead, change the way you think. Then you will always be able to determine what God really wants, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Because of the kindness that God has shown me, I ask you not to think of yourself more highly than you should. Instead, your thoughts should, be, should lead up you to use good judgment based on what God has given each of you as believers. And so last week, we, I closed off talking about, uh, or was going to share with you on uh, seven, seven signs of a transformed mind. And so we'll, we'll go through that and uh, just talk about that a little bit. And uh, seven signs of a transformed mind. So here's number one. Number one indication that your mind is being transformed. You live in hope, praise God. Uh, you ever met people who were just doom and gloom people? Mm. And no matter no matter what good happened to you, they always seem to find a negative in it. Uh, yeah, they don't have they they're not living in hope. Is it any thought in your mind that doesn't in, in, inspire hope is rooted in a lie? Mm. So when something goes wrong, a transformed mind thinks, oh, that's that's going to going to work out. But we know that all things work together what for good to those who what love God and are called according to His purpose. So. Now, now, I know people like, you know, going, no, all things work together for good. No, that's not what the Bible says. It says all things work together for good for those who love God. Okay? Now, what does it mean to love God? Well, it means you give him your all. <laughs> and in giving, me, giving him your all, it means that you are, you are willing to live a life of obedience to him. All right? And then he says, um, for we know all things work together for good to those who love God and what are called according to his purpose. So, so here's the second uh, requirement. you got to be willing to walk in the purpose of God for your life. Amen. Amen. See, people, all things don't work together for good for, for a person who's just out there living in any kind of way. That's not going to work for your good. The enemy is going to use that against you and you and bring things into your life that still kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we like to quote that, don't we? You know, we know all things work together for good. No, it doesn't say that. It said, for those who love God, that means I'm willing to give them what? My heart, my soul, my mind. All of it. All my heart, all my soul, all my mind. And then two, I've I got to be willing to walk in the call of God on my life. So whatever he's called you to do at this uh, point in your life, that's what you need to be walking in. That's what you need to be doing. All right? So you can't just uh, go say, well, everything will work for my good. No, everything's not going to work for your good. If you just, you know, if, if you believe that, then that means you can go out here and walk in the middle of traffic in front of 18 William, will, uh, 18 wheeler and, and say, well, if it hits me, it's going to be okay. Because all things work together for my good. No, see, that's not what, that's not the will of God. I mean, Amen. So, so don't 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 take one verse and part of a verse and try to use it to to accommodate what you're doing. No, it, there are qualifying. I would say there are qualifying statements that's meant of the promises of God. You know, uh, there's some things you have to do to qualify for those things. Just like you you could you could admire a company, for instance, that, that may be a company you want to work for, and and that's great and all, but but. You can't go around telling people you work for them just because you like them. You, there's a qualifying indicator that goes along with me. you got to get employed by them, right? So, so you can't just use a verse, pull it out of context, and just rip it off the pages and quote it because it makes you feel good. You've got to look at the qualifying statements for certain things. Amen? Amen. It's like everybody want to go to heaven, but, you know, but there's one way to go. There's a qualifying statement to get to heaven. You must believe on the on the Son. Pray. You must believe on Jesus, Amen. And believing is more than what you think; it's what you do with what you think. And so, we we always have to look deeper at scriptures. But he says that one of the indicating that our minds are being transformed that we live in hope. We live with an expectation. And I I found it's always easier to have an expectation uh, of God's goodness when you want, live in a life of obedience to Him. It really is. Have you noticed how you struggle with living in hope when you just Adamantly, adamantly live in disobedience, you struggle. Why? Because you're not in step with him. Because that's not an indication that you love him, and that is definitely not an indication you are walking in, in, in his plan for your life. Amen? 
So, so you, that's the first indicator. You live in hope. The second indication of a transformed mind is uh, the, impo the impossible seems reasonable. That's a big one. Because we don't believe the impossible. Many times with Christians, they don't believe the impossible seems reasonable. Well, I just don't say, God, that don't make sense to me. I hear that from people all the time. They know they, who have become intellectual in their understanding of the word. And well, that just doesn't make sense. Now, come on, man. Surely Jesus didn't walk on water. Come on now. It must have been pretty shallow water. I mean, <laughs> they didn't come up with foolish shit. They did what? Because the impossible doesn't seem reasonable to them. It, 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 they cannot understand the infinite power of God because their minds have not been renewed to who he is. Come on, amen. I always tell you, if God can make a universe, surely he can do something. He can do something like walk on water. Come on, amen. I mean, how can the one who created the water not have the power to walk and control the water? How can the one who created the body not have power over the body? Come on, amen. He can make the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear. Yeah, well, you know, I just don't believe that's really possible. I just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, because what? Your mind's not been transformed. See, just because you have knowledge about God doesn't mean you have revelation about God. You can have knowledge about me, but that don't mean you know me. You can read a book about me and say, well, I know Donald because I read his book, blah, 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 blah. That don't mean you know me because you read my book. You know, there's an intimacy that is involved. You got to go beyond the book, praise God. And you got to get to know me personally. Because there's some things, some things about me that, you, that if you read it in a book, you wouldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Or you would misunderstand. Like, I could do my autobiography and say, it says that Donald like, likes catfish and ice cream. And in your mind, you can convince yourself, I like them together. Mm -hmm. That's just nasty. Blah, 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 blah. But see, had you known me, I would have told you, yes, I like catfish, and yes, I like ice cream. I just don't like them together. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So there's something that you can only, even with the, the word of God, there's something you can only understand about him through knowing him. And so, so many times I've seen people dismiss the miracles of God and the power of God because they try to understand it within their intellect. But see, when your mind has been transformed, your mind has been renewed, uh, the impossible seems reasonable. Healing seems reasonable to me. Come on, amen. Me being blessed seems reasonable. Come on, amen. God delivering me uh, seems reasonable to me. Uh, me, need, me needing uh, a supernatural in my life when I've been living a life of obedience seems reasonable to me. That's why the word says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Well, you know, that, that, that qualifying statement of that is through Christ. Is, you got to be walking in what he calls you to walk in. Amen. Not just what you want to do. But the, the impossible seems reasonable to the person who understands and knows God. The person who has intellectual knowledge about God and reads the Bible, they will dismiss a lot of the miracles of God because it's not reasonable and it's because their mind has not been transformed. You know, amen. And sometimes, I'm going to tell you sometimes you, you, you got to believe something just by faith. Amen. See, see just because God, see, sometimes, you, see, here's the thing about God. Once you get to know him, there's some things you're going to read that's going to blow your little human intellect. Mm -hmm. But when you lay that in the light of who he truly is, then that which blows your mind can't be blown because you understand how great your daddy is. Amen? In fact, the disciples talk about how if, if all the miracles that Jesus done had been put into books, he said there would not have been enough books to contain all the things he did. Well, I just don't believe that, blah, 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 because it just doesn't seem possible that one man can do a blah, blah, blah. Here you go. Human intellect again. Your mind's not been transformed. And the reason why your mind's not transformed is because you haven't spent time with him to know him personally. You just read some pages in a book. You can never know God simply by just the book. You gotta, why would, if, if that was the case, then why would he give us the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth? He didn't say the book leads you into all truth. He said the Holy Spirit leads you into truth. And the Holy Spirit will never lead you in the word to contradict what the word says. That's when you know it's not the Holy Ghost. If you say the Spirit of God told you that God don't do miracles, well, you know, you got to throw away your Bible then. Yeah, it's the wrong spirit. Come on, it's the wrong spirit. Because the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will never contradict the written word. Come on. Amen. It, which means it would be at all. All right. So, so the impossible seems reasonable. See, when God says He's going to do something that that's never happened before, you believe it. You believe it will happen. 
Come on, amen. There are some things that, that in my life I did not have a, a point of experience for. Come on, and I'm going to tell you, if you're going to grow your relationship with God, you're going to have things in your life where you will not have a point of experience or reference. Right? You won't have people. You won't have circumstances. You've never seen it done. Come on, amen. But if you get a word from God, you got to judge whether or not is God true because of who he is or this thing that seems like an impossibility uh, going to rule in my life. Well, i got to choose. No, I'm going to believe the impossible. Why? Because everything that's impossible becomes possible when God speaks. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. Come on, amen. amen. And you have to believe it. You have to believe what his word said. You have to believe what he said. And listen, it's hard to believe what his word says when you don't know him. It's hard for you to believe that oh, uh, someone comes and says, hey, hey, Beverly, Pastor Dawson, he's going to give you a brand new car. Well, if, if, if she doesn't know me personally, she's she going she to look at that kind of cross eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, so the, the, what, what adds validity to the word is knowing the person. All right, man. You can't just know the word of God without knowing the person of God. Amen. But what if, what if someone told me, Beverly, no, Pastor Dawson, he will get you in the life. But if she knew me personally, <coughs> come on, and I, she had already gotten a word from me about blessing her, mm -hmm. she might go, oh, she, yeah, come on, amen. She goes, woo, glory. <laughs> I'm walking days over, praise <laughs> God. Isn't that true? Because she, she knows me personally. And so she can believe. So there are things I can teach you guys from the word of God. <laughs> that when you hear it, it might just go over your head. And the reason why it goes over your head because you really don't know the one I'm talking about in that depth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Here's the thing about it. If, if you hear something that goes over your head, but you start asking the Father, I, I really want to believe this. I really want you to help me understand this. I really, I really do. But I'm struggling with it. But I'm, I, but I'm not going to let go of it just because I don't understand. See, many people let the Word of God go because they don't understand it. Come on now. How many of you find that in order to get a revelation from God, you got to press through some stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and that's how, that's, come on, that's how it is. You got to press through something to believe God. And sometimes you got to climb over religion, tradition. Same you got to climb over what people told you, what people said about God that really didn't know God either. Yeah. Come on, amen. And you got to climb over all that to get your understanding of who He is. Yeah. So the impossible seems reasonable when you know that. Number three, the, the third sign of a transformed mind. You live in peace and you don't worry. And your speculations are positive. If you speculate anything, it should always lean towards the positiveness of God's power. All right. Many of you speculate the negative. And, and we live in a world that speculates the negative. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to the doctor, he'll have you dead before you leave the office. That's right. If you just let, listen to him. You know, they, they, I mean, they, they will. They'll have, you, they'll have you buried. But but see, when you know the power of your daddy and who's backing you up, oh Lord. if God be for me, who can be against me? See, that's what, but you, but you, you, you have to be thoroughly convinced of that. And I'm not talking about kind of in and out, because sometimes people's believing is kind of in and out. But I'm talking about this thoroughly convinced. Come on, amen. You, you got to be convinced. You, you got to be, you gotta be convinced in this way. How many of you believe that water is wet? You thoroughly convinced. I mean, what does somebody do? No, water ain't wet. And they kept telling you, no, water's not wet. What you going to say? Let me throw some monument. in. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. It's wet or not. In other words, you're going to be so thoroughly convinced that water is wet, they can't talk you out of it. you got to be so, so convinced and thoroughly convinced that God is who he says he is and can do what he says he can do, that no matter what anybody says, you go choose to believe God anyway. Anyhow. Amen. Amen. So, so you live in peace. So, so then listen, you know why people, you know people's minds are transformed? Because they worry about what's going on in the world. Come on, we say Larry. Way too much. Way too much. We way too much worry about what's going on in the world. Worry about what's going on in the White House. What's going on in the government? Amen. What's going on over there? What's what? Where, dude, I, God is good. Amen. Oh. And listen, look, and God's goodness for me personally 
is greater than any man's bad. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. So if God is good, then let me exalt his good right. above men's bad. I mean, the men's bad can't be greater than the God who created everything, mm -hmm. including them. And their bag can't be greater than the blood of Jesus. Glory. So if, if that's if I really if I'm thoroughly convinced about that, then what you're going to find in my life is you're going to find peace and consistency. And I'm not saying there aren't moments, hiccups in your life that come along that kind of throw you, but the hiccups don't define you. Amen. Many people allow their worry to define them. They they allow their lack of peace to define them. But, but we don't allow those things to define. We are defined by what the word of God says. Our daddy said it. I believe it. Listen, I, listen here, let me do I'll believe it even when I'm not experiencing it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, come on now. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, I'll believe it. even look, By his stripes, I'm here, but my knee's hurt. In fact, my knee's been hurt for five years. My knee hurt. But, no, by his stripes, I'm still here. Amen. Now I'm going to be, listen, now I'm going to be, now I'm going to get it. No, I got my, I got my, can you put it in my account? And since healing is the children's bread, then it belongs to me. Mm -hmm. Now see, now, now, how does, now here's what we got to do. This is why you need to know him, where healing is concerned. How do you want me to go about getting this or having the manifestation of it? Because it's not the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. He doesn't take us all through the same journey of healing, but we always know that just, there's just one healer. Amen. Right. But there's multiple ways he healed. Come on, right. glory. Come on, amen. Right. And you got to be convinced. Okay, that's why you got to get to know him so you can hear from him about what you need to do rather than listen to what people say you need to do. You got to do what he says because what he says, listen, will seem like an impossibility. It will seem ir uh, irrational mm -hmm. to a human mind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. I mean, look at the healings that Jesus performed over people's lives. Mm -hmm. They didn't make sense. They wasn't rational. They did not fit within the parameters of science. You know, when a blind man, he, he spits in the ground, makes dirt, slaps in his eyes, says, go wash. And man go wash, and he, has, he can see. Hmm. Well, no, God didn't do that for everybody. He ain't good for everybody, because everybody don't believe. According to your faith, yeah. be it unto you. He didn't say according to his faith. He said according to your faith. And you know, what can you believe me for? Well, you can only believe in him when you know him. Not just know about him, because, see, if you, if you say something about somebody, and somebody tell you it's fact, that, can always, that is always subject to change, because you don't personally know the person they're talking about. All right. So it is subject to change. When you personally know somebody, personally, no matter what somebody says about them, if you personally know them, it, your, your mindset towards that person is not subject to change, because you personally know them. But when your mind, when you don't know a person, your mind is subject to change about them because you don't know them personally. So you can't, you, what they say you don't know is authentic or not because you're not personally related with them or know them. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, since healing is the children's bread and we don't always go down the same path and, and receiving it, is this a part of the... Um, the inheritance and off when we start obeying whatever you tell us to yeah, do. Yeah, that's part of it. it. Have you noticed the more you obey God, the more he talks to you? Have you noticed the more he talks to you, the better you feel? Have you noticed that when you just receive the word of God by faith, you, you just, your body, <coughs> you just start feeling better? Why? Because there's life in the word. Mm. Not just the written word, it's the living word. It is the living word, which is Jesus, who empowers the written word. So the more you get to know Jesus personally, the more you just feel better. You, you find a little skip in yourself, a little pep in your walk. You just wake up with a little better expectation. It's not that, it's not that this body isn't decaying, but it, it's not decaying like it should because you, can, you keep hitting it with life. Amen. <laughs> Come on, amen. 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 So, you, you, you don't, you, so listen, so you live in peace, you don't worry. Why don't you worry? Because you know what he said. Not, not because you just don't worry. It's just because in order to fight worry, which, which comes out of fear, you got to know what faith says. Mm -hmm. And faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. So then if I'm not going to worry, then the opposite of worry is faith. Or, or is faith. If I have faith, it's because I know what my daddy said. Because faith only comes by his word. Yeah. 
So if I'm not spending time getting to know him personally, then, then I could let worry over, overwhelm me because I'm hearing more about worry than I am hearing about faith. That's why you don't sit around watching the news all day long. I got to watch it. And then you, you foolish. No, you got to, you should, your attitude should be, no, I got to have the word. I need what my daddy says. Come on, amen. I don't even watch I'd rather watch it. Every now and then I watch BBC News because I want to know what's going on around the world. And BBC doesn't give you the emotional spin. They just take the facts. They just throw it out there for you. But they, what you do is up to you. I like that because I don't want all the emotional spin on it and the, 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 the announcement on how they feel about it. I just, I just give me the facts and I'll, I'll let me and my father work that out. Have you noticed American news always give you feelings? Oh, it's just a sad thing. It's just a sad thing. It's just so sad. Oh, poor little dog stuck in a ditch. And then, oh, the police department, the fire Oh, they rescued little, 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 little Roy Roy. And he's all <laughs> safe now. He's all licky. And he's going to be a dog. They, and the emotions get all involved in And then they get your emotions all in it. <laughs> Have you know, that's how American news media is. They always try, try to get you into some level of emotion. <laughs> always. Watch BBC News. They no people sit there like statues. Don't they? Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? They don't give you no emotions. They don't give you no money. They, they, uh, this happened in the world. Da 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 da. da. More seen in six and ten. They they, they they don't they don't give you a bunch of emotions to draw you in. They just give you the, the facts out there. And so I look for news media like that because I don't want your feelings. I need I just want the facts. And then the facts with the facts, my, me and my daddy can work that out about what I need to do with the facts. All right. So, so we said this, the third sign is you live in peace and you don't worry. Your speculations are positive. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is speculations <coughs> are the negative of, of the, the negative what ifs in life. What if this happens? What, what, what if I do do this? And what if something bad happens? But what if something good happened? Mm -hmm. Your mind's not renewed. See, when your mind goes to the what if of, into the negative, your mind's not renewed. No, the what if, the what if, what boy, man, 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 man when God blessed me, but who, when he blessed me, man, who it's going to be good. <coughs> but we say God is good. But then why, why are our speculations so negative? Come on. If God is good. If he is the originator of good, the source of all goodness. And he lives on the inside of you. Why is your neck? Why is your speculations always to the net towards the negative? Why is it always doom, gloom, misery, oh me? Mm. Why is it praise, raise, and shout? Why, why is it that? Why is it? Why don't we see that every every, <coughs> every problem is an opportunity for a blessing? Mm. Why don't we look at it like that? Because that's what happened with Israel in the wilderness. Remember, mm -hmm. the twelve spies went out, ten came back with an evil report, said we can't do this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good land, but we can't do it. We saw the giant there, and Joshua and Caleb like, no, let's uh, let us go up immediately, for we are well able to take it. He said, uh, he talked talk about how their the defense have departed from them, and they're just bread for us. He saw the giants as a big loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. The other one saw them as conquering giants whom they could not defeat. And they said, we were, in, the, in their sight, we were as grasshopper, and even so we were in our sight. In other words, the way we perceived they saw us is the way we saw ourselves. But that's not a, renew, that's not a transform, renewed mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man, keep, I'll tell you, keep your head up. Come on. Amen. I'll tell you, I'll keep it. Don't, don't put your head People know, well, you know, you, you're going through so much. Man, can put my head down. Mm -hmm. God is good to me. Uh, apart from what I go through, God is good to me. I tell you, God loves him some Donald Batman. I don't know how he feel about you. Yeah, I do. He loves you too. But I don't know how you perceive he feels about you. But I know how he perceives me. He loved me. And I love him back, praise God. Come on, amen. So speculation are the negative what else in life. Someone with a transformed mind does not entertain negative speculations. See, they say they don't show up. But you'll entertain them. You don't sit down with them and have a pity fest about, uh, about what the what is. How many times have people got depressed because not because of what has happened, but because of the what if? And then the what if define the outcome of their lives. Like someone, so like, uh, he says, uh, what could that look, look like? If your wife comes home late from work, where does your mind go? If your mind is renewed, even your speculations are hopeful. Mm -hmm. So you think, maybe the boss kept her late to give her a promotion. <coughs> Instead of, maybe she was in a wreck. Because mm -hmm. isn't it 
it's true that any time any time something don't go the way we want it to go, we always have a, a tendency to go towards the negative, mm -hmm. just because because we're very familiar with this flesh, and we're very unfamiliar with Him and His goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, the fourth sign of a transformed mind: uh, you like yourself and rejoice in your weakness, knowing that when and where you are weak, He is strong. All right. You like yourself. And guys, you know, I done put on a few extra pounds. You know, okay? Not just a few, a whole bunch of extra pounds. And I just don't feel good about my You're still fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. and, and I really believe that if you start seeing yourself as fearfully and wonderfully made, it will change how you live. <coughs> It'll change how you eat. It'll change everything. Because, you know, when you just stop caring, you just eat whatever. Just whatever. Give me my bag. Give me my two, two ounces of soda and chips and this kind of stuff. You know, you, you, you just stop caring. And I, and I know that because I, I was there at one point in my life where I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Didn't like myself, didn't care. And I, you know, even now I go, boy, you know, I put on a shirt today. And I said, John, look at this thing, man. I said, what do you think about this? And when he started laughing, I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> I said, look bad, don't you? I said, yeah, they got to do something about that. But, you know, I mean, but you know, I don't hate myself because I, I just had to realize, you know what, don't. No, you're not 30 anymore. Come on. You're 50. And when you get filthy stuff, don't just hang like it used to hang. We'll, we'll and I'm not saying you can't, I couldn't do something better and get in shape and whatnot and all that. But I ain't going to hate myself, though. Please. I'm not going to abuse myself and go, hey, you know, man. You know, who would want me in here? I might as well just stay a single man because look at me. I'm just counting all pudgy now. <laughs> couldn't we? We don't like being People don't like themselves. But you guys know, hold up. I, I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And he loves me. And he thinks, he, he still, see, it doesn't matter how, how your outward man is changing, he still sees you as that pearl of great price mm -hmm. that he was willing to give up everything for. And if, if somebody looks at you and all they see is the external, they, they don't see you. Mm -hmm. They don't see you. Because you are more than this. Come on. All they're seeing is an enemy that's decaying. But they don't see you. In fact, the Bible tells us to, 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 to focus on the inner, the, the hidden man of the heart. Mm -hmm. To put our energies into making our insides beautiful. Because mm -hmm. one day, guess what? God will give you a beautiful outside to keep up with the beautiful inside you got right now. Come on, man. But, you, but the reason why we got this little outs, outside that's messing all up, because it's tainted by sin. Amen. But it's not us. Amen. We're living in a borrowed house. Mm. Break down. It's breaking down, praise God. We got bad yeah. landlords. Come on, here, man. They're not taking care of it. You know? Amen. But, but, you know, because this, this body is not us and it's not ours. It's, it's, it's our enemy. And we're sealed with it until we get a new one. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So how do we go from saying we're fearfully, wonderfully made to knowing and doing it? By saying it. You got to keep saying it. See, whatever you say, you go ultimately believe. Just like what you hear constantly is what you start believing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Mm -hmm. And so what, if, what are you hearing about yourself? What are you saying about yourself? To encourage yourself. Come on, amen. The Bible, and the Bible tells us that we're to encourage ourselves with songs and hymns and making mm -hmm. songs and, and melodies in our heart towards God. Why? Because, because here's the thing. It's not important so much as I, about how I see me. Mm. It's me understanding how he sees me mm. and seeing me from his perspective. Because the anything you start interjecting self into it, you always will have a messed up self-perception. But you always got to see life and even yourself through him. How do you see me, Lord? Let me see me the way you see me. Mm. Some people have put so much energy into the outward man that they begin to exalt the outer man, which is just a, an enemy. So they make their enemy real strong. They neglect their inner man, and their inner man becomes very weak. Mm. But they feel good about themselves because the inner man is all six-pack, buffed up muscles, and bam. Mm. But those same people dedicate so much energy to this, they de dedicate very little time to him. And so they know all the physics of the body, but they don't know all the ins and outs of him. And they go around saying, I'm winning, but you're not winning him. So they have, you have to, and the Spirit of God will help you find that happy balance. Mm -hmm. Amen? You know, to be honest with you, to, to get the, now I know we watch the movies and stuff, and we, you know, especially if you like, you like me, you like comic book movies, you know, like 
Avengers and stuff, you know, they take their shirt off, you think, you look, you kind of look good. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come, you got to, I got this, feel so naked and ashamed. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thank God for, for uh, the fact that sometimes he, he just allows you to get a peek into people. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I found a video, it was so funny, and all these guys were talking about, all these, all these, no, the, no, the, all the ones we know, the um, superhero movies. But they were talking about about how what, when people see that they talk about how unrealistic it is. Mm. And you know, I, 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 one was uh, what's his name? What's the guy that played Wolverine? Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. Jackman. And he was talking. Remember, I, no, no, Larry and I kind of movie, but I'm telling you, the one he played where he was fighting the samurai and he had his shirt off. Yes. And and you know, he I mean, he was when he ripped, he was so yes. man. I mean, he was so ripped. I was like, ooh. <laughs> you know, he was ripped. I took my little night band wrapped it around myself. myself. I mean, he was ripped, but he was talking about that scene. And he was talking about how much pain he was in. He said, everything in my body was hurt. He said, my muscles were trembling. He said, and it took everything I had to get to that scene. He said, because it was so painful. He said, that, that he, said, he, said he was so glad <laughs> when, that, when that movie was over with that he didn't have to do that. No. And all those, in fact, all those Hollywood guys that y'all see buff and stuff, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, play Star Lord. Uh, <coughs> mm. yeah, uh, God, uh, What's his name? Chris. Play Star Lord. Uh, yeah. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Chris Pratt. He was talking about like, shoot, man, three days when film is almost over. He said, shoot, man, I start working out. <laughs> he said, I let it go. He said, it's not, it's not realistic. He said, don't. don't. And he said, it was very honest about how it's not realistic that nobody, unless you're just doing that all day, he said, nobody with a real life can maintain that. Mm. He said, we just do that for the movie. He said, but that is not our real life. And all of them said that. They're like, this ain't my real life. You know, I just buffed up. You, and you, if you notice that the movie goes, a lot of them start getting smaller. Because can't, you can't maintain working out like that. They were talking about how they were working out six hours, you know, six days a week and constant at the gym. Now, most of it, because we got real lives, we can't got time to be sitting in the gym for no three or four or five hours a day all day long, working out, trying to, you know, and then take care of our family, pay some bills. And they, no, that, that's not real. So don't, don't let that. Don't let the world determine you liking yourself. Please. Because, you know, that, that, listen, Hollywood is nothing but a big red screen. Green screen. It's not real life. And don't let it become your real life, because it's not real life. Amen. And it's, like, it's okay to be in shape and all that, but don't, don't go overboard to where, to where that's all you think about. You know, who wants to live like, man, I can't eat that, man, I can't touch, man, I can't eat that either, man. You know, I got to count my cap. That's, they talk about how much they hate it. You know, after they said, I got sick of chicken and broccoli. <laughs> this guy, tired of baked chicken and broccoli. He said, just sick of it. He said, because that's all we ate. You know, to get in shape. For, and then I'm working out all, even between scenes where everybody go to lunch. Oh, I'm out there working out. Because I got to maintain this look. They hated it. You know, they were dedicated. Thank God they dedicated because we got some really good movies out of it. But at the end of the day, it's not real life. Don't let those things become real life to where you start disliking you and thinking you got to look like that. Mm -hmm. Most of, most, of them got, most of them ain't got time to do all that. You know, so amen. So, so you, you like yourself and rejoice in your weakness. You know what? You know, sometimes this is your weakness. You know, you, know, you, look, at, you, you, you look in the mirror and go, well, praise the Lord, keep on, walk, keep on walking. <laughs> Just keep on walking, praise God. You know what? Because the person who loves you loves you in spite of. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? God loves you in spite of. He don't care about what changes you go through. He, don't, he loves you in spite of. You know, and when somebody really has the love of God, they love you in spite of. Regardless of the change, regardless of all the crap, even regardless of the scars, it don't even matter to them. Because they see you for you. Still made in his image. So Amen. Come on, this is, I said, and here's what this, this writer says. He says, I don't, have that, I don't have a perfect life, but I actually like who God made me. Who God made me. My personhood is not just my strength, but it's also my weaknesses. I have things I'm not good at that are a part of who I am. When I'm weak, and where I'm weak, God is strong. In other words, my personhood is more affected by where I'm weak because that's where I tend to lean on God more to help make me strong. So what I want you to know is that it's okay to like you. It's okay to like you. It's okay to like who you are, you know. Hey Amen, pudgy and all. Just have to buy some different size clothes, you know. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Because you know what? Here's what I believe. Anything that's motivated out of motivated out of self-esteem, low self-esteem, mm -hmm. begins to define you. 
Now, it's one thing to get in shape because you just, you know, it's just something you need to do, you know. But when you're doing it for a self-esteem, you need to feel good about yourself, mm. uh, and it's all based on this flesh, <coughs> guess what's going to happen when it, if this flesh ever fails you? You're going to feel less, less about yourself. You're going to feel like, oh, and you know, I don't like me, somebody else will like me. That's just a lie. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, I guarantee that all the details that you're putting into it, other people aren't putting that kind of detail into it. They're, they're just not. So, but, so like who you are. And I'm not saying, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's, it's a bad thing to be healthy. We need to be healthy. But don't get to the point look, that you just go overboard crazy. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It takes a long time to get that man sick. It really does. It, takes a long time. it, it does, you know. Um, it, it, just, it just does. I mean, you know. And, and, and I feel, I sometimes feel bad for women because, you know, there's so much pressure on them to maintain the size, too. Mm -hmm. And it's not even realistic. You know, a woman has, you know, two, three, four, five kids, you know, guess what? Come Stuff on. go change. Come on. And if a man only loves her because of her, her little two size, two figure, mm -hmm. and that's all he sees and all the value he has in her, her external mm -hmm. stuff, he don't love her because he don't see her. Mm -hmm. Amen. I just, you know, I would tell people, that's like battle scars, man. Praise God. You came through some stuff, praise God. Mm -hmm. You pushed out two kids, three kids, and you came, praise the Lord, you came, you know. And the, the, to me, they're like badges of honor. Come on. Not scars of shame. Because it says you've been through something, you came through it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's, listen, there's always somebody who's graced to love you for you. Mm -hmm. Always. I, and I mean, not just, the, just, not just God. Okay, there's people in there who will love you for you. Amen. For who you are. Amen. All my time, good my time. Okay, number five, the fifth, uh, the fifth indication. Uh, I'm going to page here. Yeah. The fifth sign of a transformed mind. Yeah. You are quick to forgive and freely give others grace and mercy. Mm. That's when your mind's trying. Because you know why? You understand what unforgiveness does to you. Forgiveness is not for them, it's for you. So you are quick to forgive. Why? Because I don't want anything to separate, separate me from my relationship with my dad. All right. My Heavenly Father. Come on, amen. Yeah, uh, talking about your prayers being hindered. I don't want my prayers hindered. Mm -hmm. There some person that may not even care that I'm in unforgiveness towards them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they go and live their life. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so, so you're, but that's when you know your mind's been, you, you're quick to say, no, I forgive them, Lord. You know, I, I, I forgive them. You know, and, and it doesn't mean people don't hurt you to and where you gotta be so foolish that they hurt you, you, you keep giving them the sword to keep cutting you. That, that's that's not what we're no, saying. No, no. Amen. But what I'm saying is you don't have to allow uh, what they've done to you to keep you from a place where you decide I'm not gonna love them anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? If, if God thought like that, Lord, we we just just wipe us all out and start all over. But he doesn't look at us like that. He loves us in spite of ourselves. And so we have to forgive people and, 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 and show grace and mercy. You know, I mean, I always say hurting people hurt people. And a lot of times, you know, and I always found broken people look to break other people. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, it, it just is. And so, you know, that's why you got to have heaven's perspective. Because if you don't have heaven's perspective, a person who attack you, you will take it as a personal attack. When it may not really have anything to do with you, it just may have to do with a lot of their brokenness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, so remember that, forgive, and freely give others grace and mercy. In other words, you don't hold offenses and know how to confront and love. You can confront things and people that they do that you don't like. Absolutely, you need, need to confront them. Uh, but you need to confront them in love. Mm -hmm. Amen, not, not with a bat in your hand. Amen, uh, you know, not, not with words of, of not, you know, words that are like knives that you're just going to belittle them and hurt them. And, you know, but you do need to confront some things and people. Uh, <coughs> Love always confronts, but it confronts with love with the intent to bring wholeness, wellness, and restoration back to a person's life. All right. You don't ignore stuff, you know. Uh, uh, how can a person get better if, if nobody ever confronts them? Mm. If everybody keeps feeding the lie, guess what? They keep lying. So you have to confront something, but you confront it in love. I'm confronting you not because I'm, 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 I'm angry at you. I may be angry, but that's not the motivation. The motivation is I want you to be better. Amen. <coughs> So, so it's okay to confront some issues in people, um, but, just, but, but confront with grace and mercy in mind, because we all need grace and mercy. I mean, think about all the stuff we did not know Come on. about ourselves until God revealed it. <coughs> 
and he showed us grace and mercy. So we too can show us grace and mercy. Number six, okay, the sixth uh, indication that your mind's being transformed. You are confident and thankful. Now, it didn't say arrogant and thankful, okay? A lot of people are arrogant. No, just confident. You know, you're, you, you know people can't belittle you and put you down, and it still rob, robs you of your confidence. You know, people, some people, I mean, they get off on that, to, to belittle people, to make themselves feel confident. <coughs> uh, but you, you know, but, you, but when your mind's renewed, you are confident. It's not in, not in yourself, but you're confident in Him. Like I tell people, I know good and well, I am not the best, I am not the best uh, speaker in the world. I know I'm not the best uh, articulator of words, you know. Uh, I know I talk fast sometimes, kind of get excited. You know, I know all that about myself, but you know what? I can sit there and try to change all that to emulate somebody else, to feel, you know, to, so, so I could be acceptable to people. Mm -mm. But you know, I just made up my mind, you know what? Donald, God made only one Donald Medley. Amen. And I'm going to be a good Donald Medley. And the people that are called to me can receive me regardless of how fast I talk. If I get a little excited, I use a, a little broken English here and there. You know, it, it doesn't matter to you because you called to hear me. And so, but I'm not, I'm not going to change myself to be appealing to, <coughs> to, be appealing to the masses. I'm going to be a real good, good Donald Medley. Amen. I got my quirks. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little awkward at times. You know, I'm just, I, but I am who I am. And I'm not going to change who I am to appease people. And I'm not talking about not being sensitive. I'm, I'm, I'm just simply saying that, that there's, there's, there, are, there are personality traits that you and I have that are given to us by God. That are not, that do not violate the word in any kind of way whatsoever. You know, just be you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because sometimes I found out the problem isn't always us. Sometimes it's the people that's just looking at us because they have unrealistic expectations about how they want us to be. But be you. And, and again, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about being you in a way that contradicts the word. I'm saying this, but there are personality traits you have that, con that contradict the word. Now, when women tell me, well, I'm just loud like that, well, that contradicts the word. He said, he said you have, you're supposed to have a quiet and meek spirit, okay? Maybe you don't need to be loud. Amen. Because that, 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 yeah, that contradicts the word. And again, you may, she may always be a little loud because of, it's something in her makeup. But she do have to learn how to contain it and control it and keep it under wraps at times because a loud person out of control is not a pretty thing. See what I'm saying? And so, you know, uh, as a man, you know, something you might be kind of timid, you know, but you know, you can't be a man. You can't be timid about everything. You got to man up sometimes. <laughs> Well, you got to stick your chest out, praise God, and, and be a man, praise God. And, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, because being a man means something, you got to, to defend your family. Sometimes you got to defend your, your, your wife against in-laws. Come on, man. Amen. And it's not going to put you in a positive light, but if you're confident that you're doing what's right. Amen. You're like, you never, I see one thing I said, I would never, I would never let, like, if my, if my wife had siblings, I would, or a sibling or family member, I will never allow her, her siblings, or her mother or father, anybody, if she's married to me, I will never allow them to talk down to her. Ever. I don't care if I'm at a company, fun I mean, a, a family function. Mm -hmm. If you talk down to my wife, oh, it's, it's going to be on. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you <coughs> like me. I don't care if you say you can never come back. I'm good. I'm cool with that. As long as I know my queen is okay, I, whatever. Say that. Come on, amen. <laughs> And so you have to do that sometimes, you know. And I and I know people that that struggle with that. Like, dude, don't let them talk to your wife like that. Okay, they are her siblings, but they know them alone. I don't care. Like they alone. You don't let nobody dog your wife. Come on. Amen. And if you if you have a woman that 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 uh, I say this to those out there, you know, if you, if you have a woman that don't want you defending her to her family because she's so busy trying to defend her family, uh, you need to do some praying. Because mm. that's something off with that type of relationship. A amen. Amen. So, so six things uh, indicating your mind is being transformed is that you are confident and thankful. This is uh, thankfulness shows that you realize you got something you didn't deserve. Mm -hmm. So the difference between arrogance and confidence is gratitude. See, I'm grateful for who I am because there's nobody else like me. There really isn't. How many Donald Methods do you know? <coughs> just one. Hey, Amen. Just one. There's just one me. And I am fearfully and wonderfully named. Amen. With all of my little quirks and imperfections, guess what? He still loves me. Amen. Amen. And number seven, uh, the seven way you know your mind is being transformed. You believe in others and give them the benefit of the doubt. 
You know why? See, com see if you're not confident, you can't do this. You, if you're not a confident person and, and a thankful person, you can't do number seven. I'm going to tell you right now. If you're not confident in the fact that God got you, God loves you, He cares about you, and you are secure in who you are, uh, you, 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 you won't believe in others because when you have a lack of confidence, it's an insecurity. And whenever somebody hurts you, your insecurity kick in, and you're like, I'm gonna, ain't going to ever hurt me again. And so you're not, you're not going to believe in others. You're going to run from others. And you're not going <laughs> to give them the benefit of the doubt because your insecurity will cause you to run and protect yourself. So it's a, but, but when your mind is being tra is transformed, you believe in others, and you give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I cannot tell you in the last years of my life how God has shown me how to give people uh, to believe in people, even when they didn't believe in themselves. <laughs> and it is astounding to me the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Listen, not so much on their end, but the grace of God on my end where he gives me the grace to believe the best about somebody, even when everything looks the worst. Mm -hmm. And it only comes from God. But the thing is, I'm confident. It's, you know, I, and I'm not arrogant. I'm, I'm confident in the fact that I know who I am. Praise God. And so when people say, oh, if I was you, I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do that, or I wouldn't take that, or if I, but you're not me. Because you're probably not where I'm at. Just as I'm not where you are. Amen. Amen. You know, man, man, think about it. If that, was the, if that was the attitude that Jesus had towards us, mm -mm. none of us would be here today. Isn't that true? Yeah. You know, we didn't deserve <coughs> him. Amen. He didn't deserve what he went through. Come on. But he went through it anyway because, this, because he had the word of the Father on it. And he wanted this. He didn't do it. This, he didn't do it to make you happy. He did it to make the Father happy. And that, listen, there are things you're going to go through for people, not because you necessarily believe in them, but more so you believe in him and what he told you to do for him. And I, I, I tell you this, you know. I, I say this to you, that when you deal with people, you have to always remember that people are an assignment. Mm -hmm. People will always be an assignment if you're being led by God. God never leaves you without an assignment. Mm -hmm. So if he calls you to people, he calls you to people with an assignment. So if you're, if you're married, guess what? That husband has an assignment. It's called wife. And that wife has an assignment. It's called husband, which means it's not about her making him happy or him making her happy. It's about them together making the father happy. <laughs> so anytime you have people in your life that, that, that is ordained of God, uh, believe the best about them. Show them grace and mercy. Give them the benefit of a doubt. Maybe, they're, maybe they said that to me not because somebody they, they're hurt trying to hurt me or, or hurting or the intent is to hurt me. Maybe it's because they're hurting. Because I know now, if you, stick some, if you stick your finger in somebody's gunshot room, guess what? They might hit you. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they want to hit you, mm -hmm. but the pain is what's causing <coughs> the reaction. And sometimes you got to take your finger out of the hole and get a bandage and, and, and mend it for them, praise God. Amen. To, to help them see that there is a love that can accept you right where you are. In the midst of all your hurts and all your pain, but there is a love from the Father that's working through people that can help you mend. See, but all that comes through you knowing who you are and being confident in that and being thankful to God for the life you have. See, when people are not compassionate of people, it is an indication to me that they do not remember how compassionate God has been to them. Mm. Jesus took a lot for us. Mm. He really did. So, so why is it any different for us if, we, <coughs> if God is trying to conform us into the image of his son, then why are we not willing to take a lot for people? And again, not on your own, not in your own will, but by the leading of the Lord. Because there are people in your life that God will call you to, to show grace and mercy to. To believe the best about when they're looking, at, when they're looking like they're worse. But all this comes about, y'all, when the mind's transformed. It really does. When your mind gets, so you, you stop being critical, extremely critical of people when your mind's transformed. Now, some of you say, oh, they don't know no better. Come on, amen. Sometimes you can't always try to read in between the lines of what, why people do what they do 
say what they say. Sometimes you just know what, Lord, just grace them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you, you will wear yourself out trying to read in between the lines of people. Just be thankful that you got somebody in, in who's living in you who already read between the lines. Come on, man. And he'll tell you what to do for them. He really will. He'll tell you how to, how to love them. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you when to do it. He'll tell you when to walk away, you know. No, no when to hold them, no when to fold them, no when to walk. <laughs> you'll just, you'll just know. You know. He'll let you know. And, uh, but you want to always believe in others and give them the benefit of the doubt. See, you don't know other people's motives. Half the time, you don't even know your own motives. <laughs> That's not true. You don't even know why you respond the way you do. So like, why am I respond? Why am I upset? You know, you don't even know sometimes. Why am I like this? You know, you don't even know your own motives. That's why you just need to be led by the Holy Ghost. So that means in all your leading, there's always an assignment. But assignments are wonderful when they're led by God. Because there's always grace and mercy from Him to extend to us to walk out the assignment. Amen. So those are seven signs to help you understand, know when your mind is truly being transformed. So next week what we're going to talk about um, is, a, is a woman, uh, Judy Allen. Her name is Judy Allen. And uh, this kind of found her online. And uh, she talks about five steps to renew your mind. And so I'm going to go over that next week with you, uh, about five steps on how to renew your mind. Her name is Judy Allen. Uh, I thought there were some very simple, practical ways uh, that, we, that would help us renew our minds. Amen? Amen. Pray God. So I pray it bless you. And uh, again, we'll do this next week. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Pray the Word of God blesses you and encourages you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the Word tonight. And we thank you uh, for just allowing us to... Uh, just experience uh, and have an outline for how we know that our minds are being, being transformed. Lord, we just thank you for the grace of the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us to walk out the will of God. And even as we stumble and we fall, Father, help us to be mindful that even in the fall that you, we are still fearfully and wonderfully made. Please. And that we will not allow the thoughts of the enemy to condemn us and say that we're not worthy, O oh God. In truth, because the truth of man, we were never worthy, but because of Jesus. Glory. He made us worthy, Father God, because of the shedding of his blood, by the giving of his life, Father God, and for the hanging on the cross. And so we thank you, Father. Father God, we just thank you tonight that, that the things that we've learned thus far about why to renew the mind, that, Father God, that these things will carry with us through the rest of the week and even through the rest of our days, oh God, that we'll be mindful of the fact that, that, that to bring our thoughts and and, and under control, Father God, that to know that we are well able, Father God, to control ourselves because the greater one lives on the inside of us. Wow. And so, Lord, we just declare that we love you. We thank you for the great grace that you continue to show us in helping us to renew the way we think. And so we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God.